Hello, my name is Aino Kori, and I'd like to take a few minutes of your time explaining to you the program of Go to Chicago 2016. I'm the program chair of the program committee for this conference, which means that I get to work with the people who are inviting the speakers. And if you look very closely, you can see me as the tiny pixel in the red dress right behind Dave Thomas on the stage. But less about me, more about the program. We have four keynote speakers at this conference divided on three different sessions. First, we have Eric Gamma. He is a member of the Gang of Four, the authors who wrote the very famous book about design patterns in the 90s. He was also one of the leaders of the Eclipse Project and the JUnit Project, and he's a distinguished engineer at Microsoft. In this keynote, he's going to talk about how he's developing something like Eclipse for developing in the browser, a huge TypeScript system built with web technologies on top of the Electron shell, Node.js, and hundreds of open source components. He wants to share with you how much fun it's been working on something like this with modern technologies. Next, we have Lars Bach and Kasper Lund from Google. Lars Bach is what you'd call a virtual machine serial monogamist, which means that he's been working with a lot of virtual machines in different languages over the years. Languages like Self, Beta, StrongTalk, Hotspot, OVM Smalltalk, and V8. Out of these, you probably only know one or two, one of the most famous being the V8 for Google Chrome. He's speaking with Casper Lund, who's got more than 10 years of industrial experience in designing and implementing virtual machines. When he says that he has more than 10 years of experience working with virtual machines, it means A, that he's worked with Lars Bach for more than 10 years because nobody else works on that for so many years, and B, that he apparently has worked with virtual machines more than half of his life, judging from his picture. We also have Deborah Harris from a whole other field. She's worked on neutrino interactions and oscillations. She's a scientist at Fermilab. She's a co-spokesperson of Minerva, an experiment whose goal it is to measure neutrino interactions on a variety of different nuclei with unprecedented accuracy. In her keynote, she'll help you understand neutrinos and how they behave and why they are important. We know that this keynote's got nothing to do with IT, per se, but our experience shows that people in our field are very interested in other technologies as well and can get ideas and inspiration from listening to scientists from other fields, even though it's not something they can use in their daily work. We also have to choose which topics we have in the conference. Choosing the topics means that the programs committee has to look at what, what is popular at conferences around the world, what is popular in Chicago at the moment. We have to ask the user groups what are the technologies that you're working on, what are the technologies that you'd like to work on, what would you like to know more about. We also speak to developers and engineers in different companies all over the world. And last but not least, we ask the attendees what they would like to know more about at the next conference. With all this data in hand, we then choose which of these topics that we'd like to have. Some of our topics that we're really interested in have to, we have to let them go. And these are the topics that we ended up having. Microservices, of course, every IT conference needs to have a track about microservices at the moment. Financial services, we needed to have that because Chicago, always on, very interesting track about the challenges of running systems that cannot go down with some great case studies and technologies to support it. Programming languages, well, because the program committee loves programming languages, so we need something like Elm, C++, and Go. The data and distributed systems track merged together because we found that we couldn't have one without the other in our presentations. And DevOps best practices because we've had DevOps tracks in the past, but what we hear from people is that instead of, instead of having the developers and the operations merging together in a DevOps group, what some people end up having is developers, operations, and DevOps, which means that we now have three silos instead of two. So the best practices is, again, how do we actually make it work? High performance organizations is a track describing how organizations become highly performing. So instead of focusing on it has to be the people or it has to be the process or it has to be the methods, we try to show different examples of high performance organizations and what makes them high performing. We need to have a track about JavaScript. Nothing more to say about that. We have a track called the fun stuff which is 
entertaining presentations, but they all are, but these are the presentations that we couldn't really fit into the rest of the program, but what we needed to have, like looking at your code as a crime scene, uh, looking at the versioning system, learning how to learn, learning how to teach um, children to program. And we have also the solution tracks, which are real-world examples and tools presentations from our sponsors. If you look at the list of speakers that we have accepted at the conference so far, there are more to come, you can see that we have a very diverse crowd of speakers. What we do when we choose the speakers in the program committee is that we try to find some that fit our topic, but we also work the other way around. Sometimes there's a speaker we just need to have, and then we need to make them fit into the track. We look at three different things when inviting speakers. Do they know what they're talking about? Are they good speakers? And are they well respected in their field? Of course, we'd like all speakers to have all three, but two out of three ain't bad. So if they know what they're talking about and they're good speakers, we don't really care that they're not famous yet. And actually speaking at Go to Chicago might take them a step in the right direction. So be open-minded when you come to the conference, go to some of the presentations by the speakers you know nothing about and try to just learn what they could teach you. We also have workshops which is full day possibilities of delving into a subject. So instead of just having 15 minutes at a session where you can be inspired to learn something about a topic or where you can fill in the gaps of things that you know most about or where you can just have a good laugh or be provoked, we have workshops the day before and the day after the conference where you have a full day to delve into a subject and actually learn about it. In between all the talks, the keynotes and the workshops, we have something almost more important. We have all the ways that you can network and communicate and learn more from your peers or maybe speak to the speakers in a more relaxed setting. So we have the breaks, we have the exhibitors hall, we have the parties. But this year we also have something else, which is programming for children the Sunday before the conference. So if you have a child interested in programming, or a child who you'd like to make interest in programming, you should come along Sunday before the conference. There's a lot of good testimonials about the GoTo conferences overall, but one of my favorite GoTo conferences is the, is the Chicago conference because it's still small enough to be intimate and it's in a very interesting city with very interesting attendees and very curious attendees as well. So I really enjoy coming to GoTo Chicago each year. And with that, I'll just hope to see you in Chicago. Have a nice day.